and we're going to count down from 10 to get them underway. So are you ready? Starting at 10, 9, 8, Come on! 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. OK, cheer your team. Cheer your team. Remember, they are going to be building these bridges in less than 10 minutes. Come on, give your team some encouragement. So what's happening now? The initial part of the bridge is called the horseshoe. The uh, small part you'll see fitted on the front is the, called the nose, and that is for counterbalance to enable the bridge to be pushed out uh, across the gap without it falling in the gap. And from my spectacle, teams looking fairly evenly matched at the moment. Yeah, very good. Both, both teams are doing very well on the first boom. I think the light guys need a bit more of a cheer from this side, please. Thank you. And once they've got that first bit in, they're now moving on to creating the sort of centre sections, yeah? Yeah, what they're putting on now is what's known as bays of bridge. This is a five bay medium girder bridge. It can span up to nine metres in length, a river up to nine metres or a hole in uh, nine metres. And uh, once it's fully built, ramped and decked, it can take a vehicle that's wheeled up to 130 tonnes and a track vehicle up to 85 tonnes. So anything the British Army's got in service now, once this is completed, we'll be able to drive over the top of it. It's quite amazing to think something, you know, like the tanks that we've seen driving around the arena, sort of 70 tonne tanks, will be able to drive across something that your guys have built in less than 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it is a, a spectacular a bit of kit, you know, and the guys are digging in blind here. Uh, the components you see being picked up now are close to 200 kilos. The bank seat beam at each end is close to 500 kilos. So, you know, they're making it look very easy, but it's very, very heavy kit. I have to say, after a bit of a slow start, the light t-shirt guys have really picked up from their cheer. So hopefully uh, this side are going to be giving the uh, darker t-shirt guys a real cheer, because they need to catch up. I think they're slipping a little bit behind now. So, once they've got to the uh, end of the section they're building now, they've then got to sort of presumably construct the other side so that the uh, equipment can get off it. Yeah, basically the, the main frame they're building now is what takes the structural weight for the traffic that goes over the top. That needs to be pushed over to the far side and, and jacked down into position. Once it's jacked down fully, they can then put the ramp and decking on so that vehicles can drive over the top. And of course today, you know, we're doing this for demonstration purposes, but presumably when the soldiers are building these, actually, uh, when they're uh, in combat situations, they've also got to be keeping their eyes open for potential enemy uh, fire and stuff around them as well. Most definitely, yeah. These bridges have been used recently in Afghanistan in contact. Uh, these bridges have been built. Obviously, the guys work like this all the time, but clearly they've got more kit with them, body armour on, etc., so that they won't get this sort of time, but they will do it with the same sort of enthusiasm and gusto. And effectively talking about that, obviously today they're able to do it in their uh, combats and t-shirts. I imagine with full body armour on, uh, to build a bridge is quite a challenge. Yeah, it's an absolute unbelievable workout. Well, looking at the moment, it looks like the uh, light t-shirt guys have just a fraction ahead. There's not a lot in it, so uh, do keep your cheering, please, for your teams. I think the uh, darker t-shirt team need a bit more encouragement from this side of the bank, if you wouldn't mind. Maybe give them a wave with your hands as well, really give them some encouragement to get this done. It really is an amazing feat to be watching these guys building this so quickly. And of course it's, it's almost like a performance. You can see that it's stage managed and that every single person knows the exact job they need to do. It does hinge on everyone being spot on, doesn't it? Yeah, it's all about teamwork. Both teams have got section commanders in charge but the guys know what needs to be done next, but the section commander makes sure that it goes to plan. Now, see, when that fell off there, I got worried, but you were. Why is that? That's, that's the bridge getting put into position. The home side's pushed down onto the home bank, and the far side now has got the section commanders jacking it up to get the roller out so that they can sit, the bank seat can sit firmly on the ground. And I see in this instance they're using sandbags. Is that something they would use, actually, uh, in manoeuvres as well? No, we've got the sandbags built up there because uh, during training we're not actually meant to push it down, we're meant to uh, jack it down. But uh, to get around that, I've built sandbags up to make it uh, friendly. No, I like that, it's very good indeed, looks fantastic. So we're uh, getting towards the uh, first bit of it being built. There's not much to do be between these teams, are there? It's quite amazing how they can be so close. 
Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the bridge itself takes the main strength to build, uh, the, the bays and the bank seat beams to go in. The ramping and decking is where you need the out and out cardio fitness because the components aren't quite as heavy, but you're running backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards along the bridge, so the fitter guys will prevail here. And this is what's happening now, we've seen the uh, light t-shirts looking like they're uh, way ahead now, I have to say. They do seem to have stolen a little bit of a march, don't they, at the moment? It's all still to play for. Two seats have got some very fit guys here. They, they can easily pull this out the bag if they get going. So do keep your encouragement going. This is the hardest part. How much does each one of those weigh? They're about 60 kilos. 60 kilos between two people. That's uh, quite someone you're running to and fro, to and fro, to and fro, isn't it? Yeah, most definitely. Like I say, they're making it look very easy, but believe me, they're in pain right now. <laughs> Well, they seem to be really flying ahead in both uh, both teams now. Coordination's working well. And we heard earlier that um, obviously the bridges, when we were talking to you right at the very beginning of today, these bridges are used in combat all the time. And um, presumably it must be a real aid to the uh, tanks and the other military vehicles that need to get through that you guys are able to construct these, you know, right into uh, battle zones. Yeah, most definitely. People always say an army marches on its stomach. Well, without the engineers, they don't even get to eat. So we are pretty integral into uh, wherever the army goes, whether it's on light roll, i.e. on foot, or in heavy armour, there's always royal engineers in support for them. And interestingly, uh, your words have been uh, borne out because we said that the guys in the uh, lighter t-shirts are slightly ahead. They seem to have slipped back a little bit there, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they've um, lost out a little bit, but they can still get it back if they just dig in deep. So we need some encouragement from this side, please. Come on, 3-9. We need some encouragement for these guys. Come on, they're just feeling the heat. It's a very hot day out today. And uh, they are very heavy bits of metal that they're lugging around. And of course, you've got to build the sides as well, because the track vehicle's going across. You can't afford to have them uh, slipping off the edge, can you? No, the curbs that are going on, they won't stop a tank sliding off, but they'll, they'll help the wheeled vehicles if the driver gets into difficulty, because it's a metal surface, obviously if it's raining and muddy, wheeled vehicles are most likely to slide on the metal bridge. And although obviously this is, um, you know, all for show here at um, Tank Fest, it's quite important, presumably, that this kind of training continues uh, throughout the year. Yeah, we get, to, we get our hands on the kit as often as possible. Uh, we, we're actually deploying to Afghanistan in September this year, and uh, the, the guys have been training on this kit for, for use out in theatre when we get out there. And that's the sort of thing that um, a lot of these people watching today don't realise that you are going to be going out to Afghanistan um, in the next few months. Um, preparations must be quite intense for that. Yeah, it is. It's been ongoing since pretty much March this year. Uh, the guys have been working pretty non-stop, so they've come all volunteered to come down for this and uh, just to get a bit of a weekend away. And of course, you said that um, you know the engineers uh, help to fuel the uh, the army, and we're looking at obviously this bridge building exercise. What else do they um, do they do? Uh, we do everything that the British Army needs. We do everything from water supply, road construction, mine warfare, explosive demolitions. Uh, anything, any, you name it, we do it. Okay, final cheers from the crowd because we are getting into the last few minutes now. It's going to be remarkably tight. 3-9 uh, getting a bit of encouragement there from Sergeant Major Gary Cattle, or Beef as he's known to his friends. I can't believe that it's so close after uh, this amount of time. Look at that, we've got our winners. Well done, 12 minutes. We haven't, we'll get the times as soon as we can get them up to us and let you know uh, how we've done against yesterday. Yesterday's fastest time was 9 minutes and 48 seconds. So two six, of course, the overall winners. Three nine one yesterday. They were their minutes with their time. Yeah. We'll get the times now. Hardest job is climbing up this bank. <laughs> okay. Nine minutes fifteen. Three nine.
Okay, so let's get some information to the uh, crowd. What do we know so far? Okay, 3-9, time was 9.15. 9 minutes 15 for 3-9 Armoured Engineer Squadron. And the winning time for 2-6 Armoured Engineer Squadron was 8 minutes 33 seconds. 8 minutes 33, and if my memory serves me correctly, and not to build you up too much, but I do believe you were on a team that did it in just under 8 minutes in the past. So 8 minutes 33 is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, 8.33 is absolutely fantastic considering they had one full day of training before they started. Well, ladies and gentlemen, can you give them both a big round of applause? It's incredibly hot out here and that really is an amazing feat.